welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for this uh, session. My name is uh, Guillaume, this is Etienne. We are both uh, DevOps engineers at a French tech uh, company uh, called Octo Technology, based in Paris. So does uh, anybody run uh, Prometheus into production uh, in this room? Okay, few, few of them, cool. Uh, does, anybody does anybody run it on uh, architecture with uh, no container? Just a simple architecture. No one? Okay. So uh, today we are going to show you how we run Prometheus, how we configure it, and how we use it in our uh, daily uh, job um, at a company called, uh, what we call a French, French FedEx company. So this is the equivalent of uh, the FedEx here in the uh, in US. So that's us. Uh, you can find us on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and you can find us uh, at the event uh, the rest of this week. So a little bit of context um, about the uh, French FedEx company. So their main goal is uh, to move a package from point A to point B and to track uh, every event of a package lifecycle. So every time a package is moved, or touch, uh, this is flashed, and an event is uh, generated and injected into our architecture. Then our architecture uh, computes and aggregates uh, these events to generate a relevant business data. For example, you can uh, know uh, where is your package uh, almost in real time. Then we store and serve this result uh, for our uh, customer. So in terms of uh, figures, it's almost uh, two million package uh, delivered uh, per day. This uh, package uh, generates uh, around 20 million events uh, into, an, into our architecture. And our architecture is running almost 200 processes running 24 seven to compute this event. So to sustain this goal, we use a uh, basic uh, messaging uh, architecture, message, messages based uh, architecture. Uh, it's composed of almost uh, 90 servers, so it's not container, it's uh, all instances uh, running on a private cloud on a Nutanix infrastructure. So every time um, an event um, generates, uh, a package generates an event, it is going to go to uh, Kafka topics, then you have Spark Swimming application um, reading these topics in, into Kafka, compute the events and store it into a Cassandra database. Then behind this, we have some front-end API uh, for our customer to uh, retrieve the result and the event and to re-inject uh, some uh, messages into the Kafka topic. So the whole uh, infrastructure is managed with Ansible. Um, and at the beginning of the project, we didn't have any uh, monitoring architecture. We were blind uh, on the infrastructure. We could not see if it was working properly, if uh, any of the components uh, was failing or not. So the first uh, thing we have done is to uh, begin to uh, set up our, our architecture infrastructure and to uh, retrieve some metrics. The first layer that uh, we began to watch was the system metrics. So we used a Prometheus node exporter um, that we uh, set up on every server of our architecture to retrieve uh, system metrics like uh, CPU, RAM, and everything. So we do this by Ansible again. Then the second layer we, we watch is uh, what we call the middleware layer. So this is where we are going to monitor uh, every of our uh, components like Kafka, Spark, Cassandra, or Zookeeper. And we use several different uh, exporters. We have a uh, JMX exporter uh, for uh, Java-based uh, Java um, middleware like Kafka or Spark. We have specific exporter um, like Elasticsearch exporter or HA Proxy exporter. And of course, we have some homemade exporters that we build ourselves. And the last layer um, that we end up uh, monitoring was the application layer. So that was the Spark Swimming application and the APA that was developed in Scala. So this is where the developers are uh, running and um, publishing their own metrics um, for uh, giving us uh, business uh, data. Like the architecture, the simple architecture uh, for monitoring that we set up uh, is that we only have uh, one Prometheus server, which is plugged to an alert manager, and a Grafana for dashboarding. 
Then beyond this, we have all of our uh, communication tools and DevOps tools, like Slack for receiving uh, alert manager notification, mail, and some Jenkins uh, to trigger remotely jobs. Uh, our Prometheus is scrapping uh, all of these endpoints. And in terms of uh, figures, again, uh, we have almost 250 endpoints that are scrapped uh, every 15 seconds into our architecture. Um, in terms of volume, it means it's uh, more than 15,000 metrics uh, into our Prometheus, and it's around uh, 15 uh, gigabytes of data every day uh, scrapped by the Prometheus server. So uh, as Guillaume said, the first step when you want to start to build a monitoring infrastructure is to have some basic metrics about your system, some metrics relative to your CPU, your RAM, for example. To do that, Prometheus provides different examples exporter, and the first exporter is the node exporter. This is a binary written in Go, and just simple as that, you are running it into your server, and you can have some basic metrics about it. You can have RAM, CPU, or file system. The, the exporter, you can have the ability to extend the component of uh, the, your exporter by using collector flags. In our system, we are based on CentOS, so everything is wrapped using systemd. With that flag collector systemd, we are able to scrap metrics relative to systemd. For example, we are able to have the states of, the, of different units. It's very useful to have monitoring on systemd. So the second layer that we want to monitor is the middleware layer. To do that, you have two different ways. The first way is to use specific exporter. We have Elasticsearch Exporter, HA Proxy Exporter, or Zookeeper. These exporters are scrapping metrics and then translate metrics into Prometheus metrics. And you have the second way, and when to you have when to have some Java component, you need to use a Java agent. This agent is provided by Prometheus. You stick it to your component, and when it runs, it exposes your metrics relative to your component, and then Prometheus will scrap your metrics, and you will have metrics from your Java middleware into your monitoring system. So now we are monitoring systems, we are monitoring middleware, the last layer is monitoring your application. So it's your dev job. Prometheus provides different, different client library, so you can find library in Ruby, in Go, or in Python, and this library gives to your developers the ability to have our own metrics to build their own business data directly from the application. In our case, our developers are building application on Spark Streaming, so they are using Scala client library, and in using that client library, they are able to inject metrics directly into the Spark, and then when we scrap the Spark middleware, we are able to have developer metrics into the system. So in our stack, we are using the Highlight Manager. And the Highlight Manager rule is to, to fire event relative to Prometheus rules. So when, we, when the Prometheus rules is fired, the Highlight Manager will match uh, the, this alert using labels. And you can send the alert to different receiver. You have receiver for Slack, for example. You can send email. And you can send to custom webhook too. Using that example, we are, sent, you are, we are triggered Jenkins jobs remotely, and if the Jenkins job have, for example, some Huncible, run some Huncible playbook or Chef playbook, you, you can have a beginning of self-feeding directly into your platform. So now we have metrics among about the third layer in our infrastructure. We have thousands of metrics. It start to using, it start to build some dashboard. To do that, you will have to query your Prometheus. And Prometheus provides different <coughs> functions to query your system. So we love particularly two functions. The first one is TopK. TopK is very useful to extract some data when you have a lot of endpoints. The second, the second query is Predict Linear. Predict Linear, this is very useful when you want to exploit, extrapolate data using simple linear regression. For example, Using that example, you are, you are able to say, in six hours, my file system will be full or not. This is very useful when you want to prevent outage into your system. 
So uh, everything uh, was, uh, it was a lot of theory. Um, obviously, we don't have access to the production environment from here. So we prepared a little demonstration. Um, you can uh, see the schema here. So we have a little um, Python application, uh, which is reading and injecting into a single uh, Kafka node. Then uh, behind this, we have all of our uh, monitoring infrastructure. So we have one primitive server, one Grafana, again for dashboarding, the alert manager. Uh, the alert manager is plugged to a Jenkins and to a Slack uh, system. And uh, on this architecture, we have uh, several endpoints, uh, some to simulate system metrics, other one to uh, monitor middleware metrics, so the Python application and uh, some to monitor the service metrics. Uh, all of the code for this demonstration is available uh, at this uh, GitHub repository, and Etienne and will run you through the, the demonstration. So the first step when you define, uh, when you set up your parameters is to define endpoint. So you have different way to define your endpoint, and on that demo, we have, uh, def we have defined our endpoint using static configuration file. So you can find the configuration. We have defined different end endpoints. So we have metrics from the different layer. We have metrics from our business application, our Python application. We have metrics from the middleware Kafka. And we have metrics for node exporter. Now we have different endpoints. We have metrics. We are able to build some dashboard using our Grafana. On one dashboard, we are able to have different metrics, to have different curve, to have different graph relative to the, each layer of the system. In this demo, we have a little Python application. So I will show you how it's simple to, to have some metrics directly into the Python application. So don't judge me. I'm not a I'm newbie in Python. So. <laughs> So I used a client, a Python client library, and then I define a matrix like that. So I'm able to have my matrix. I increment my counter. Then the library will expose matrix on an HTTP server. So in my in my in my primitive system, when I look up for the matrix, I can find my matrix directly. <laughs> from my Python application. This Python application is injected data and in reading, in reading data into Kafka. So we are able to see the, the, the behavior of the Kafka when it is hit by my application. And the application, every 45 seconds, raises an error. This error is catched by my primitives. It raises an alert. So we can find in the primitives. So every 45 seconds, the alert, an alert is triggered. It's sent to the alert manager, the alert. And then the alert manager will, will trigger remotely a Jenkins jobs. And this Jenkins jobs simply will restart the application and send an alert into our Slack. But, uh, yes. So you can see it's like his, uh, the application is running and it's triggered some, some alert. So uh, you can see that it's really simple to have an uh, advanced feature. So right now we have a full stack monitoring on our architecture. So we are monitoring the three layer application system and middleware. We have some uh, alerting and self healing. But um, it's uh, so much more than just uh, watching dashboard and uh, having metrics. It allows us to do uh, some uh, other thing in our daily basis uh, jobs and to uh, change our way of working. So as you saw, we have uh, self filling and alerting. So we get rid of, get rid, sorry, of uh, some manual action and we can focus uh, on delivering more value and to improve the overall uh, architecture. With some of the queries we show you, uh, we can predict failure and correct it uh, before the outage uh, is uh, present. So it means uh, less business loss. Of course, uh, this means uh, faster troubleshooting and root cause pinpointing because we can use the dashboard and the metrics we have and not log in to the server and do some manual steps. So it helps 
troubleshoot faster. The fourth point is to tune and improve configuration of middleware parameter because we can see all of our middleware are working properly and alive into our dashboard. So we can see which one is overloaded or which one is uh, less used. So we can tune the configuration to improve the overall platform performance. And of course, because we can see uh, all of the logic flow of, uh, of an event into our architecture, we can see which component is a bottleneck or not. So maybe uh, your Kafka is slow, but this is because uh, the reading into your Cassandra uh, are really slow. So we can improve the overall platform performance. So this was the upside, but the dev side, and all of the team are also using it. So as an ops, obviously I use my metrics and I use my dashboard every day for everything. But when we built the system, we decided to open the dashboard for everything, for every people involved in the project. It was for the developer for the, and for the business team too. To give, give, give to the, your developer the ability to watch your dashboard, it will bring some benefits. The first benefit is for your developer to improve the testing of our application. I, as a developer, I can see the impact of my release directly on the system by looking at the dashboard. It's a good way to improve the testing and for your developer to benchmark their application. It's a good way to improve globally the quality of the code into your company. The second way is when I am a developer, if I see the dashboard, if, the, if I see the status of the infrastructure, I, 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 I am more confident and I have more visibility into the platform. Having the relevant metrics, the relevant insights from the platform, it, it's a good way to involve the top management, to, to involve every people to give a comprehensible view of your system. And then, using Prometheus, your developers are able to inject directly their own metrics and they can build their own dashboard. So this is a good way to give to your developer more responsibility. So everyone is uh, using it. Uh, it's easy to set up, but um, we ran into some uh, problem um, along the road and we wanted to share with you some uh, tips and tricks that we learned. So the first one is um, it's easy to set up, as I said, but it's uh, more difficult to master because you will have a lot of metrics uh, and you will not know uh, what to do with it. Um, it's uh, time consuming to uh, continuously improving uh, your metric, your trigger uh, and your alert to match it to uh, useful things. So maybe sometime uh, when you build troubleshoot something, you will not have uh, the metrics in your dashboard and not the right, not the right dashboard. And maybe an alert will not uh, have been configured. So uh, this is a work you need to do uh, continuously to have the right metrics, the accurate threshold, and prevent uh, also what we call the alert fatigue. So maybe at the beginning, you will want to have uh, an alert on everything. So you can see some red things uh, blinking everywhere. But at the time, uh, you will not watching it anymore because it will be useless or uh, not meaningful alert. So you have to continuously improve and change uh, what you have already. The second tips, uh, it's an obvious one, okay? But you, all of your applications, servers, and, moni and monitoring platform need to be in sync in terms of uh, NTP. Uh, otherwise, you will have some problem uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, timestamp uh, on your metrics. But the second point is uh, more important. Is, this is when you are um, watching your Grafana server, uh, the browser you use and uh, the Grafana server the clock must not be too far apart. Other way, if you want to query a specific timeline and the clocks uh, are not in sync, uh, maybe you will have uh, no, no data point available because the requested timeline uh, will not be the same on your browser and on your Grafana server. So you need to be careful with this and you need to mine your NTP. So this is true story. We really, <laughs> it really happened uh, on our project. So, so you just have, oh, everything is done, but okay, so just the clock, that's far apart. The um, third uh, thing is, is what we have called the scrapping interval trade-off. So again, this is a true story, but on the left, 
you can see that uh, at the beginning we set up a scrapping interval of five seconds. So the scrapping interval is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of uh, five seconds. So the scrapping interval is um, um, how often our Prometheus will query the, our endpoint, so our 250 endpoint. So you can see that uh, the consumption uh, in terms of CPU is at almost 75% uh, and sometimes peaking at 100%. So this is because we use Prometheus 1.5, not Prometheus 2.0 yet. But um, Then uh, what we choose to do is to set a higher scrapping interval and to put it to uh, 15 seconds. And you can see that it reduces uh, almost by half our CPU consumption. So this is uh, why we call it a scrapping interval trade-off. If you have a low scrapping interval of five seconds, we will have almost uh, real-time data because the lag effect will only be of five seconds between the data uh, on your server and the data on your Prometheus. But it will be CPU intensive if you have, like us, only one Prometheus server. So you will need to have a robust Prometheus server or have a bigger architecture, like using aggregation, HA proxy, and everything. On the contrary, if you use a higher scrapping interval, of course, you will have uh, what we call the matrix lag effect. So with uh, 15 seconds, the data that we have in Prometheus are 15 seconds late on the real data on our server. But it uses uh, a lot less uh, server resources, like you can see on the graph, and you can sustain more endpoints with uh, the same amount of resources. So one Prometheus server for us. So you need to choose wisely uh, your scrapping interval based on your uh, business requirement and your number of endpoints that you have on your architecture. And the last tips, that the golden tips, and that's what we want you to uh, remember of this presentation, is that uh, Grafana and Prometheus are not used only by ops people or uh, infrastructure people. Uh, it is used by everyone, the dev team, the business management team, and everyone on your uh, product team. So you need to open it uh, to every of your team directly at the beginning, so you can have the right metrics for everyone, you can have the right alert, and you can have accurate uh, data into your dashboard, into your Prometheus, and that your queries are correct. And so everyone can be involved and use it. So the next step in the roadmap of uh, our project is, obviously, it's to upgrade to Prometheus 2.0 to improve the performance of uh, the global system monitoring. The second one is we don't have high availability. For instance, we have already run server Prometheus, so we want to explore advanced features and especially high availability. As Guillaume said, every day we are continuously improving, triggering, improving threshold or alarm, so we will keep that way. To improve the investigation, we will starting to set up a Grafana dashboard swelling, so it will be a better way to troubleshoot faster and with more efficiently. We have a beginning of self-healing with our alert manager and the Jenkins. So we will keep, keep on to improve it because we are lazy people. And we said that uh, our infrastructure is running on Nutanix uh, infrastructure and yet we do not monitor that layer. So when, when you want to benchmark application, when you want to benchmark your system, it's better if you have each layer. So for instance, we don't have that, that layer, so we will add some exporter on that underlying infrastructure. And sometimes the uh, underlying infrastructure can uh, make you some problem too, so if you don't watch it, you will never know what happened. So true story again. So the takeaway for our presentation, it's the first one, it's using Prometheus, you are able to have a lot of metrics. You are able to have a lot of data. So do not hesitate to instrument your whole infrastructure and you will have a full stack monitoring. The second way is this is very easy to, to start in an exporter, to start in uh, Prometheus and to have the beginning of data. So it's very fast to deploy, but it's very long to master. Continuously you have to improve your dashboard, to improve your trigger and improve to Thresor. Work with your user. Do not hesitate to share your data with everybody, with every people uh, involved in the project. You will have a lot of benefits. People will be more confident into your platform, business, business team, and man top management will be more involved into your project. 
and it will improve quality of the code of the developer because we will be, developer will be more confident into your platform and they can see directly the impact of the release and of the code. So having a full stack monitoring, it will change the way of working for the Hops team and for the dev team too. Prometheus has a lot of exporter for each component. So obviously, you will find your exporter that you need. And if you don't find the exporter that you need, you can easily code your own because Prometheus format is just a key and value and you have a matrix. So if you, if you don't find your exporter, do not hesitate to write your own and to open sources for the whole community. So thank you, uh, that's all for us. If you have any question, we have, uh, I think, like maybe Five, five or ten five minutes, minutes? Five minutes? Yeah. What caused your Jenkins automation to auto heal? Oh, what cause, what, what triggers a job remotely? This is the Alert Manager, which is uh, matching um, rules on the Prometheus. Mm -hmm. And so then the, uh, Jenkins can, is running on Sybil job. So on Sybil. No, oh, the uh, Python application raised an error. So the si system status uh, changed to failed. And with the node exporter, uh, we can watch it, the service status. So when it failed, an alert is triggered into the Alert Manager. And this uh, alert triggers uh, a Slack notification and uh, remotely jobs into a Jenkins, as a Jenkins word, and just an Ansible playbook to start it again. So that's just basic self yeah, Uh, no, we, as we said at the beginning, uh, we only use Ansible to deploy uh, the architecture, but also the monitoring infrastructure. So we use uh, Jinja templating uh, with the Ansible inventory to populate it with our target and to configure uh, all of the configuration files in YAML. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so. Uh, in the demo, it's just a, sy a system, system D restart. So, but in the real life, we are running on Sybil playbook for different, for example, we have a job that, that check if, um, if the f file system is full or not. So we have, j we have playbook that run on, on the server, on the target servers to clean, to clean the log, for example. So again, it's an Sybil playbook uh, behind it. Yeah. Uh, Windows? No. <laughs> no. Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's uh, all of the architecture is in uh, uh, CentOS 7. Ah, uh, okay. We don't have any experience with that. Sorry. Uh, okay. Do you run Prometheus either inside the cluster that you're monitoring or outside? Yeah, inside. <laughs> yeah, inside, but they're pulling me. Not no, but uh, we are asking ourselves this question, like uh, maybe we should deploy it uh, outside and not uh, on the same platform. Thank you, good demo. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.